giving advice to his companions, the number of Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam once said, "Learn the Quran from twelve persons: Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Salim maula Abi Hudayfa, Ubay ibn Qab, and Muaz ibn Jabal." We have just heard about one of these companions, but who was the second person in whom the Prophet had so much confidence that he considered him a hujja or competent authority? to teach the Quran and be a source of reference for it. Salim was a slave and when he accepted Islam he was adopted as a son by a Muslim who was formerly a leading nobleman of the Quraysh. In the practice of adoption in which the adopted person was called the son of his adopted father was banned. Salim simply became a brother, a companion and a maula. person of the one who had adopted him who was Abu Hudayfa ibn Utba through the blessings of Islam Salim rose to a position of high esteem among the Muslims by virtue of his noble conduct and his piety both Salim and Abu Hudayfa accepted Islam early Abu Hudayfa himself did so in the face of bitter opposition from his father the notorious Utba ibn Rabia who was particularly virulent in his attacks against the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his companions when the verse of the quran revealed abolishing adoption people like zaid and salim had to change their names zaid who was known as zaid ibn muhammad had to be called after his own natural father hence forth he was known as zaid ibn haritha Salim however did not know the name of his father indeed he did not know who his father was however he remained under the protection of Abu Hudayfa and so came to be known as Salim maula Abi Hudayfa in abolishing the practice of adoption Islam wanted to emphasize the bonds and responsibilities of natural kinship however no relationship was greater or stronger the bond of Islam and the ties of faith which was the basis of brotherhood the early muslims understood this very well there was nobody dearer after allah and his messenger to any one of them than their brethren in faith we have seen how the ansar of medina welcomed and accepted the muhajirin from makkah and shared with them their homes and their wealth and their hearts The same spirit of brotherhood we see in the relationship between the Quraysh aristocrat Abu Hudayfa and Salim. They remained to the very end of their lives something more than brothers. They died together, one body beside the other, one soul with the other. Such was the unique greatness of Islam. Ethnic background and social standing had no worth in the sight of God. Only faith and taqwa mattered as the verses of the Quran and the sayings of the Prophet emphasized over and over again. The most honorable of you in the sight of God is the one who is most deeply conscious of him. The Quran, Surah Al-Hujurat 49:13. No Arab has an advantage over a non-Arab except in taqwa, consciousness of God. taught the noble prophet who also said the son of a white woman has no advantage over the son of a black woman except in taqwa in the new and just society founded by islam abu hudayfa found honor for himself in protecting the one who was a slave in this new and rightly guided society founded by islam which destroyed unjust class divisions folks social distinctions salim found himself through his honesty his faith and his willingness to sacrifice in the front line of the believers he was the imam of the muhajirin from makkah to medina leading them in salah in the masjid al quba which was built by the blessed hands of the prophet himself he became a competent authority in the book of god so much so 
that the Prophet recommended that the Muslims learn the Quran from him. Salim was even further blessed and enjoyed the high estimation in the eyes of the Prophet, peace be on him, who said of him, Praise be to God who has made among my ummah such as you. Even his fellow Muslim brothers used to call him Salim min Salihin, Salim, one of the righteous. The story of Salim was like the story of Bilal and that of tens of other slaves and poor persons who Islam raised from slavery and degradation and made them in the society of guidance and justice, imams, leaders, military commanders. Salim's personality was shaped by Islamic virtues. One of these was his outspokenness when he felt it was his duty to speak out, especially when a wrong was committed. A well-known incident to illustrate this occurred after the liberation of Mecca. The Prophet sent some of his companions to the villages and tribes around the city. He specified that they were being sent as Duat to invite people to Islam and not as fighters. Khalid ibn al-Walid was one of those sent out. During the mission, however, he fought with and killed a man even though the man testified that he was a now a Muslim. Accompanying Khalid on this mission was Salim and others. As soon as Salim saw what Khalid had done, he went up to him and reprimanded him listing the mistakes he had committed. Khalid, the great leader and military commander both during Jahiliyyah and now in Islam, was silent for once. Khalid then tried to defend himself with increasing fervour, but Salim stood his ground and stuck to his view that Khalid had committed a grave error. Salim did not look upon Khalid then as an abject slave would look upon a powerful Makkah nobleman, not at all. Islam had placed them on an equal footing. It was justice and truth that had to be defended. He did not look upon him as a leader whose mistakes were to be covered up or justified but rather as an equal partner in carrying out a responsibility and an obligation. Neither did he come out in opposition to Khalid out of prejudice or passion, but out of sincere advice and mutual self-criticism, which Islam has allowed. Such mutual sincerity was repeatedly emphasized by the Prophet himself when he said, Ad-Dinu al-Nasiha Ad-Dinu al-Nasiha Ad-Dinu al-Nasiha Religion is sincere commitment. Religion is sincere commitment. Religion is sincere commitment. When the Prophet heard what Khalid had done, he was deeply grieved and made a long and fervent supplication to his Lord. O Lord, he said, I am innocent before you of what Khalid has done. And he asked, Did anyone reprimand him? The Prophet's anger subsided somewhat when he was told, Yes, Salim reprimanded him and opposed him. Salim lived close to the Prophet and the believers. He was never slow or reluctant in his worship, nor did he miss any campaign. In particular, the strong brotherly relationship which existed between him and Abu Huzaifa grew with the passing days. The Prophet, may God bless him and grant him peace, passed away to his Lord. Abu Bakr assumed responsibility for the affairs of Muslims and immediately had to face the conspiracies of the apostates which resulted in the terrible battle of Yamama. Among the Muslim forces which made their way to the central heartlands of Arabia were Salim and his brother Abu Huzaifa. At the beginning of the battle, the Muslim forces suffered major reverses. The Muslims fought as individuals and so the strength that comes from solidarity was initially absent. But Khalid ibn al-Walid regrouped the Muslim forces anew and managed to achieve an amazing coordination. Abu Huzaifa and Salim embraced each other and made a vow to seek martyrdom in the path of the religion of truth and thus attain felicity in the hereafter. Yamama was their tryst with destiny. To spur on the Muslims, Abu Huzaifa shouted, Ya Ahl al-Qur'an, O people of the Qur'an, adorn the Qur'an with your deeds as his sword flashed through the army of Musaylam and the imposter like a whirlwind. Salim in his turn shouted, 
What a wretched bearer of the Qur'an am I? If the Muslims are attacked from my direction, far be it from you, O Salim. Instead, be you a worthy bearer of the Qur'an. With renewed courage, he plunged into the battle. When the standard bearer of the Muhajireen, Zayd ibn al-Khattab fell, Salim bore aloft the flag and continued fighting. His right hand was then severed and he held the standard aloft with his left hand while reciting aloud the verse of the glorious Qur'an. How many a prophet fought in God's way and with him fought large bands of goodly men. But they never lost heart for all that they suffered in God's way. Nor did they weaken in will nor give in. And God loves who are firm and steadfast. Surah Al Imran 3 146. What an inspiring verse for such an occasion. What a fitting epitaph for someone who had dedicated his life for the sake of Islam. A wave of apostates then overwhelmed Salim and he fell. Some life remained in him until the battle came to an end with the death of Musaylimah. When the Muslims went about searching for their martyrs, they found Salim in the last throes of death. As his life blood ebbed away, he asked, What has happened to Abu Huzaifa? He has been martyred, came the reply. Then put me next to him, said Salim. He is close to you, Salim. He was martyred in the same place. Salim smiled a last faint smile and spoke no more. Both men had realized what they had hoped for. Together they had entered Islam, together they had lived, and together they were martyred. Salim, the great believer, passed away to his Lord. Of him the great Umar ibn al-Khattab spoke as he lay dying. If Salim were alive, I would have appointed him my successor.